Hello class, good day. Uh, welcome to our first topic in environmental science. So in this discussion, I am going to discuss the introduction to environmental science. So I hope you are prepared to listen in this uh, in this discussion and sit back and relax and I hope you will learn a lot. Okay, so please tapusin nyo po itong video na ito kasi po at the end meron po akong announcement. Okay, so uh, there is an announcement na kung saan yun yung way ko, how I'm going to monitor na pinanood nyo talaga ng buo yung discussion na to. Kasi along the way or along the slides, there are questions Okay, so malalaman ko kung pinanood nyo talaga yung video na ito. So, let me proceed. I think you are ready. Okay, so let me start with the, with the outline of the things that I am going to discuss in this ano, recorded video. So, first of all, where I'm going to discuss the nature of environmental science. The second will be, um, why do we need to study environmental science? Is it... Um, relevant to your life, to your course. Kasi kung hindi rin lang naman to relevant sa atin, so bakit pa natin to paglalaanan ng oras ng ating isip? Ayan, so we need to answer why do we need to study environmental science, okay? So another, uh, another topic that I'm going to include here is that the different environmental ethics. So ano ba yung mga ethics na nag-govern when it comes to environment? Okay, so another uh, interesting topic is the environmental attitude. So what are the different environmental attitudes that we must have? Okay, so and lastly, I am going to discuss the different environmental principles. Okay, so so far, these are the interesting topics that will be included in this an uh, video discussion so i hope uh, madami kayong matututuhan and let's begin okay so let me start with the nature of environmental science so this will be the uh, the first part so the nature of environmental science so first of all um, what is environmental science? So, to for us to be able to understand what uh, what is our subject is all about, we need to uh, define first or we need to discuss first the nature of environmental science. So, so far, um, environmental science is an interdisciplinary field, okay, that includes both scientific and social aspects of human impact on the world. So, pag sinabi natin interdisciplinary, eh, hindi lang siya nagtotalk about science. Hindi lang siya nagtotalk about the environment. So, ibig sabihin, dito sa environmental science, meron din ditong politics, meron din ditong laws. Ayan. So, kasi, ang nature niya talaga is interdisciplinary. So, bakit kaya siya tinawag na interdisciplinary, mamaya malalaman nyo kung bakit. Ano po? Also, uh, this uh, environmental science also includes both scientific, okay, and social aspects. Hindi lang po more on scientific, pero ano di ba yung social aspect when it comes to the to our impact. Tayo, di ba? We are human being. Okay? So, tayo yung nakatera sa environment, sa earth mismo. Ano ba yung, yung, ano, yung impact natin bilang mga tao sa ating, ano, sa ating paligid? So, that is environmental science. Also, this is the study of the interaction of earth's system and human system. So, this is one of the most interesting definition of environmental science because indeed, okay, this subject, you will you will realize in this subject that uh, the different earth system okay is really interacting with the human system so paano na si shape ng interaction ng earth system and human system yung environment na meron tayo okay so again para mas maintindihan natin yung nature ng environmental science we need to define these two important terms first of all the term environment okay so the term environment and second the term science so para mas maintindihan niyo yung yung dalawang term na yan let us define those terms so first of all pag sinabi nating environment um it refers to the surrounding condi conditions that affects organism so lahat ng nasa paligid niyo 
everything that affects you, living man yan or non-living, okay, so that is considered as environment. So, lahat ng nakaka-apekto sa buhay nyo through your ano, entire life, so yun yung tinatawag nating environment, okay? It is everything that affects an organism during its lifetime, okay? So, lahat ng nakapalibot sa inyo, mga tao man yan, mga bagay, mga hayop, ayan, so those are considered as environment. So, pag sinabi naman nating science, Okay, so, di ba, uh, this is not new to you because elementary pa lang kayo, uh, alam nyo na kung ano ang science, but we need to, ano, to review what is science. So, sabi dito, science is a process used to solve problems or develop an understanding of nature that involves testing possible answers. So, pag sinabi natin science daw, Okay, it undergoes scientific method. So, I know you are aware with the processes of scientific method. Okay, magkakaroon ka muna ng problem, magkakaroon ng hypothesis, then mag-gather ka ng data, i-analyze mo yung data, and then magkakaroon ka na ngayon ng conclusion. Okay, ano ba yung possible answer? Ayan, so dito, in order to understand the nature of something or of the problem that you are currently studying, you need to, ano, to test that. Okay, para makakam up ka ng possible answer. So, that is science. Okay, ibig sabihin, in ano, science is a process of building knowledge, scientific knowledge. Okay, specifically to solve problems. So, pag pinagsama natin tong dalawa, okay, through science, we will be able to, to, to study the environment na ginagalawan natin. So, napakaganda ng combination na to. So, in this subject, I know you will learn more, more a lot about the environment. Okay? About dun sa environment na ginagalawan nyo. Ano po? So, let me continue. Another is that environmental science daw is a mixture of traditional science. Okay? Individual and societal values, economic factors, and political awareness that are important to solving environmental problems. So, ito na po yung dahilan kung bakit nasabi ng environmental science is an interdisciplinary. Okay? Hindi lang siya environment, hindi lang siya science. Kundi, it's a mixture of science, society, economy, okay? Politics, ayan, ito pa. May encounter, makaka-encounter din tayo ng uh, about sa chemistry, sa physics, ayan, biology, laws, engineering, ayan, so ethics, ang dami. So, parang this subject is an encompassing subject, okay? Kaya napaka-interesting yung pag-aralan kasi hindi lang siya isang subject lang talaga. So, maraming matatouch na, ano, na other fields. It involves an understanding of scientific principles, economic influences, and political action. So, kung mapapansin nyo, yung mga decisions, I hope, yung mga decisions ng ating mga political leaders, okay, nakadepende po yun sa mga scientific principles or scientific knowledge na pinag-aaralan ng ating mga scientists. Hindi dapat pwedeng basta lang mag-implement ng law, especially environmental law, without undergoing, ano, undergoing scientific method. Okay? And then, yung mga decisions na din yun, yun din po nakaka-affect sa, ano, sa ating economy. So, once na mag-decide yung ating mga political leaders, okay, na ikakaganda ng ating economy, it will definitely affect us, okay, as part of the, of the society. Okay, so napaka ano siya, um, medyo komplikado, but this is ano, very interesting ano, subject. Okay, so sabi ko nga dito, a decision may be supportable from a scientific or economic point of view, may not be supportable from a political point of view without modification. So, there are decisions na pro siya sa, ano, sa environment. Okay, hindi naman siya pro para doon sa, sa ikakaganda ng isang community. Okay, for example, yung pag-widening, de ba? So, in a political point of view, that is good, okay, that is alright. But in the in terms of uh, environmental view or scientific view, okay, hindi siya hindi siya ganun ka ano ka favorable, kasi nga de ba? Puputulin yung mga punong kahoy. But in terms of economic, 
Okay, in terms of economic, napaka-favorable niya kasi kapag widen, uh, wider ang ano, ang roads, 'di ba? Mas ma, mas mabilis yung pag-transport ng mga products. So, dito sa subject na ito, magtitimbang-timbang tayo. So, tama ba yung mga decisions na pinaggagawa ng ating mga mga political leaders? Okay, nakakatulong ba sa ating environment yung mga pinapatupad nilang laws or kaya pang sariling ano lang 'yon, pang sariling agenda lang nila. Okay, so We will, ano, uh, we'll discover those. Okay? So, another, um, also, di ba, namanggit ko na to kanina, environmental science is the study of interaction of earth system and the human system. So, eto po, meron po tayong four, actually, there are four earth's environmental systems. We have the air, water, land, and life. So, so far, eto yung mga tinutukoy na environmental system. So, yung tubig na iniinom nyo, yung water na nilalanghap nyo, ay, yung water, yung tubig na iniinom, yung air na nilalanghap, tama, and yung land na kinakatayuan nyo, at yung, yung all for forms of life na nagbibigay sa atin ng buhay, okay, yung mga plants, yung mga animals, those are considered as environmental systems. And tayo, bilang tao, we are also system. So, mamaya makikita nyo kung ano ba ang ibig sabihin ma'am ng system. Bakit po yan palagi mong binabanggit? Kasi po, dito sa environmental science, uh, from time to time, we will use the word system. Because, ayun nga po, kasi nga po, that is the interaction Iba yung ES is an interaction of earth system and human system. So, from time to time, gagamitin talaga po natin yung word na system. Okay? Kasi po, ayan. So, one of the most ano, unique nature of environmental science is the world interrelatedness. So, this word is a core concept to environmental science. So, uh, as we go along with our discussion, mapapansin nyo na the uh, there are all there are different variables okay sabi dito the high degree of interrelatedness among seemingly unrelated components is a central factor that makes the study of environmental science so interesting so first um, frustrating and at the same time challenging so dito po my dear students um titingnan natin dito yung pagkakakonek connect Ayan, so pagkakakonek-konek ng mga bagay-bagay sa ating environment. Paano nagiging connected ang atmosphere? Okay? Sa sa ano, sa water. Paano naman nagiging connected ang water sa land? Paano nagiging connected ang land sa atmosphere? And at the uh, all in all, paano nagiging connected yung mga yun sa atin bilang human being or bi uh, bilang part ng ano ng ng biosphere. Ayan. So Uh, kung at the end of this subject, makikita nyo yung, ay okay pala, pwede palang i-relate yung itong variable doon sa ibang variable. Kasi parang hindi naman sila related, pero meron silang connection. So, indeed, interrelatedness is a core concept to environmental science. Okay, i-connect-connect natin yung mga bagay na feeling nyo ay walang kinalaman sa bawat isa. Okay? Okay, we will utilize the ecosystem approach. So, ano ba tong is approach na ito? So, ecosystem approach is an important approach in dealing with environmental problems. So, sabi daw dito, uh, when talking about environmental problems, etong approach na ito is very suitable. Okay, so, environmental science involves an understanding that the natural world is organized into interrelated units called ecosystem. So, eto daw po, <clears throat> sa environmental science, for us, to be able to understand yung natural world na ginagalawan natin, okay, kailangan nating maintindihan na yung mga bagay na nasa paligid natin, those are interrelated. Kaya nga po, yung interconnectedness is a core concept in environmental science. So, konektado po yan, okay, so, yung mga kinain nyo kaninang lunch, okay, paano kaya yun napunta sa table nyo? Do you think isang bagsak lang? na andyan na yung food. Okay, sino kaya yung nagtanim nun? Paano kaya yung proseso ng pagtanim nun? Okay, paano yun napunta sa market? Okay, so that is why um, the ecosystem approach is very ano, uh, suitable in our subject. Okay, kasi di ba pag sinabi nating ecosystem, ayan, so nandyan na yung mga living things, yung mga non-living things, water, air, land, ayan. So, 
Uh, kaya itong approach na ito, talagang i-utilize po natin ito. Ano po? So, sabi natin, uh, ecosystem is a region in which the organism and the physical environment form an interacting unit. So, tayo, di ba, we're an example of organism. Okay, so we are ano, we are interacting with our environment. So sa pag-interact natin sa ating environment, sa mga plants, sa mga animals, sa mga bagay, okay? Uh, we somehow we are ano, we are moving in an ecosystem. Okay? Meron kasi itong mga level-level, maliit na ecosystem, then hanggang sa mas malaking ecosystem. Ayan. So, ito kung nasa picture. So, this is an example of ecosystem. Ayan. May mga living things, may mga non-living things. Ayan. So, yan po. So, within this region, there is a complex network of interrelationship. So, ito nakikita niyo yung lalaki na mimingwit siya. Ayan. Para makakuha ng fish. Ayan, so yung fish na bubuhay sa water, okay? And then yung water sinusupply ng rain. Ayan, then yung rain saan nanggagaling sa sa clouds, okay? And then saan ulit nanggagaling yung uh, yung water na galing sa clouds. Ayan. So those are examples of uh, interrelationships, interconnectedness. So napakaganda. Napakaganda nitong approach na ito kasi maiintindihan niyo na at the end of this semester, may intindihan nyo, ay, ah, connected pala sila lahat. So, anything na nabaguhin ko sa isang variable will have, will definitely have uh, domino effect to other variables. Okay? So, mamaya may papakita ako sa inyong, uh, may papakita ako sa inyong image na pinapakita yung example ng tinutukoy kong ano po, scenario. Okay? So, ngayon, di ba, sabi ko kanina, uh, we'll, uh, from time to time, will be using the term system. So, ano nga ba yung system ang tinatawag? Okay? So, pag sinabi natin class na system, okay? So, it is a group of interacting, interrelated, and inter interdependent parts or components that form a complex and unified whole. So, pag sinabi natin sistema, it's a group. Okay? Gru grupo siya, okay? Na nag interact na they are interrelated, they are interdependent para buuin yung isang ano unified whole. Okay? So, I have a question here. Can you think of a system, an example of system? Sige nga, I'll give you one one minute. Okay? So, in this video, I'll give you one minute, now, seconds lang, to think of the different examples of system. So, in our next ano synchronous class, Okay, so tatanungin ko kayo um, what are the examples of systems that you know? Okay, so sige, I will give you, you can write down your answer in your notebook. Okay, then para meron kayong may sagot sa akin during our synchronous schedule. Okay, so para mas maintindihan nyo kung ano ba ang system, eto, I have here, so for example, our life. So, in a very simple example, yung buhay natin is considered as a system. Okay? Meron pong mga different parts ang buhay natin. We have the work, uh, work life. Okay? Yung religion natin. The home where we are, ano, where we are uh, staying. Yung family na meron tayo. And yung school life na meron tayo. So, eto pong school, work, religion, home, and family, ang tawag po dito ay mga parts. Okay? So, tayo bilang tao, uh, yung sistema natin bilang tao, binubuo tayo ng iba't ibang parts. At etong mga parts na ito, they are interacting. Okay? Unang-una, for example, school and work. Okay? Kung depende sa pinag-aralan mo, probably yung magiging work mo. Tama ba? So, that is an example of interacting parts. Also, these are interrelated kasi nga po, di ba? Kung ano yung tinapos mo, probably yun yung magiging work mo. Okay? And also, they are interdependent. Okay? And also, kung makikita ninyo another arrow here, kung ano yung work mo, di ba? Yung work mo nakadepende sa tinapos mo. Kung ano yung work mo, nakadepende doon kung anong magiging kapalaran ng family mo. Okay? So, kung, kung happy ka sa work mo, so, ibig sabihin, yung magiging family mo is happy din kasi nga, ano ka, parang inspired ka mag-work. Ayan, so, it, uh, nakadepende sa work mo yung happiness ng family. Okay? And, depende sa family mo, <laughs> ayan, nakadepende sa family mo, yung 
kung puno ba yun ng pagmamahal, puno ba ng compassion, okay, yun yung magdi-define sa bahay na meron kayo. Okay? So, and at the same time, yung bahay na yun, kung ano man ang binuo nyo sa bahay na yun, okay, it, it will somehow manifest your, ano, your belief, your religious belief. Okay, so kung makikita nyo dito, ayan, makikita nyo madaming arrows. Ayan, so ito po yung example ng sistema. Merong mga parts, merong mga components na kung saan nag interact they are interrelated and interdependent with each other. At etong mga parts na yan, okay, yan po ang bumubuo sa kabuuan ng buhay mo. Nakadepende dito sa mga parts na ito kung anong buhay ang meron ka ngayon. Okay, example, your life now is miserable. Okay, depende yan sa mga, sa mga parts, the different components na bumubuo ng buhay mo. Okay, so I hope uh, sa ganitong kasimpleng ano, uh, explanation, uh, naintindihan nyo kung ano ba yung tinatawag nating system. Kasi from time to time, gagamitin po natin yung word na system. Okay, so ngayon, for the second question, why the environmental science is considered as a system. Oh, bakit po bakit po kinonsikino consider natin na yung subject natin or, or the earth's environment is considered as a system. Okay? So here first of all the the first ano, the first um, justification that earth can be considered as a system because it is composed of several components which are interacting to shape our current and future environment. So, di ma, sabi natin sa pag sinabi natin sistema, merong mga parts na lagi interact, interrelated para mabuo yung kabuuan. So, yung environment natin class, okay, binubuo din po yan ng iba't ibang components. Okay, so I hope may idea na kayo kung ano yung iba't ibang components, yung air, water, land, ayan. So, those are examples of components. Yung mga yun, nag interact yun, okay, para ma-shape yung ating current and future environment. So, kung ano mang meron tayo ngayon, kung napapansin nyo, sobrang init na, okay, yan po yung naging dahilan, ng, ah, ang naging isa sa dahilan dyan is yung interaction ng different components or Earth's component. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why Earth's environment is considered as a system. Also, it is a single system consisting of smaller interconnected sub-systems. Take note of the word, ha? So, yung environment daw natin, yung Earth mismo na ating kinakatayuan, na ating ginagalawan. Okay, it is considered as a single system. Okay, na merong mga smaller, maliliit na parts which are interconnected, okay? And tinatawag na din nating subsystems, okay? So, another reason is that it is an integrated system, but it can be subdivided into four main components, okay? So, integrated system siya, pero binubuo siya ng iba't ibang components, but are categorized into four main components. So, here it is. So the what uh, the next question now is what are the components of Earth's environmental system? Okay, so di ba encounter nyo ba tulong sa pre-test nyo? Ayan, so this is very ano very simple, and I hope na kuhan yun ng tama yung mga sagot doon. Ano po? So, eto po, eto po yung four components ng Earth's environmental system. So meron pa yung air, water, land, and life. So kung mapapansin nyo po, eto mga components na ito. Sabi ko nga. Uh, air for atmosphere, okay, land for lithosphere or earth, okay, the solid part of the earth. And we have here hydrosphere for water and lastly, yung biosphere for life. So, kung mapapansin nyo dito sa picture na ito, yung atmosphere, lithosphere, and hydrosphere, they are interrelated with each other na nakaka-apekto sa ating mga part ng biosphere. Okay? Pag sinabi nating biosphere, all living things. Okay? Mapa, mapa insect man yan, worm, bee, kung ano man, anything na may buhay. Okay? So, uh, kabilang siya sa biosphere. Okay? Even bacteria. Ayan. So, kasama siya. So, sabi dito, these components are interacting with each other to shape our current and future environment. So, itong mga components na ito, my dear students, ito po ay nag-interact sa bawat isa. 
For example, bakit tayo uh, during rainy days? Ayan. So, bakit kaya nagkakaroon ng ulan? Ayan. So, nandito na po yon Yung mga tubig sa hydrosphere, nag evaporate Then, magiging part siya ngayon ng atmosphere. Magiging air. Okay? After niyang mag-condense, ayan, magiging na po siyang rainfall. Babagsak siya sa kalupaan. Ayan. So, pag nasaturate na yung lupa, Okay, yung mga water pupunta ulit sa mga bodies of water and then the cycle will repeat ano yan, nang paulit-ulit. Okay? And yung yung interaction nito ang talagang nakaka-affect sa buhay ng mga ano na member ng biosphere. Okay? So this indeed these components are interacting with each other. So isa yun, ito po is this is a manifestation or this is a um, reason Okay, evidence na na ang ano talaga our Earth's environment can be considered as a system kasi meron siyang mga parts which are interrelated, interconnected and interacting with each other. Okay, so musta naman kayo chat? Ayun. So I hope you are still listening. Okay, so madami-dami pa po ito. Ayun. So ngayon po Ayan, so I will introduce you to a very powerful approach. Okay, the word is systems thinking. Okay, so this is an approach na ginamit ko na siya. Okay, last uh, previous ano semester and nakita ko yung ano niya, yung relevance niya in studying environmental science. So ano ba tong systems thinking na ito? So we will try to understand and visualize how these components interact. So Tatry natin, paano ba talaga ma'am nag interact yung mga components na yan? Okay? Uh, pwede ba namin makita ma'am yung interaction nitong air, water, land, and biosphere? Okay? So, possible po yun through systems thinking. So, ano ba tong systems thinking na to? Diba? Sabi ko sa inyo from time to time, we're going to use system. The word system because it's very important in the field of environmental science. So, what is a systems thinking then? Okay? So, sabi dito... Systems thinking is a way or an approach of understanding your day-to-day -day world or your environment, okay? That emphasizes the relationships among a system's parts rather than the parts themselves. So, napakadaling intindihin nito. Yung systems thinking daw is an approach para maintindihan mo yung iyong kapaligiran. Okay? Na hindi nag emphasize doon sa mga parts. Yung, yung work mo, yung life mo, yung family mo, uh, without emphasizing that. Pero ang ini-emphasize niya, ano yung relationship ng mga parts na yun? Okay? Ano ang relasyon ng life sa, ano, ng buhay mo sa school, sa iyong work? Okay, ano ang relationship ng work mo sa family mo? Ano ang relationship ng family mo sa home na meron ka? Ano ang relationship ng home na meron ka sa religious belief mo? Okay, so systems thinking kung ano, kung mas papaanuhin pa natin, mas papa babain natin yung yung definition nito is that sabi dito, systems thinking offer you a powerful new perspective. Okay? A specialized language and at yung pinaka importante it offers you a set of tools okay that you can use to address the most confusing problems in your everyday life work and your environment so anong kagandahan nitong systems thinking na ito ito po hindi yun lang po ito magagamit sa subject natin even tapos na kayo ng subject na ito okay magagamit niyo pa din itong systems thinking for example pag nagkaroon kayo ng problema sa buhay Okay? So, etong approach na ito, uh, sa anumang field, pwede nyo siyang gamitin. Okay? But don't worry kung medyo naguguluhan pa kayo ngayon, I will teach you how to utilize systems thinking as an approach. Okay? Kasi, isa ito sa pinagtutuunan ko talaga ng, ng pansin ngayon. Okay? Kasi I'm developing ano, a model. Okay? So, as part of my study, I'm developing a model, ano, um, focusing in this approach, the systems thinking approach. Kasi nakita ko yung ano niya eh, nakita ko yung potential. Okay? Nakita ko yung potential niya in helping students to understand problems in their everyday life, in the work environment, and the earth as a whole. Okay? So, gagamitin natin tong approach na ito. Okay? So, for the next question, ayan, so, Take note, ha? 
ha? Uh, during our synchronous class. Um, para ma-assure ko na pinanood nyo tong video na to. Okay, I'll be asking, ano, of course, relevant questions, ano, related to this, ano, to this video discussion. So, okay, so keep on watching. Okay, so, madami ka pang matututuhan. Okay, so we need to answer this first, the, ano, let me continue. Why we need systems thinking in studying environmental science? So, bakit naman natin mamayan kailangan? Okay, so sabi nga kanina, okay, systems thinking utilizes a variety of tools that help make thinking visual. So, ito ang pinaka-unique na pinaio-offer ng systems thinking. Meron siyang tools, may, meron kayong tools na gagamitin, okay, na yung mga nasa isip nyo, Okay, sobrang dami na nasa isip nyo. Gagawin nating visual or if uh, gagawin nating ano ba? Ah, uh, ilalagay natin into paper para mas ma-visualize niyo nang maigi. Okay, using those tools, okay, ma-visualize niyo yung mga interrelationships, interconnections, interrelatedness. Ayun. So by using methods to take our thinking and reasoning outside of, of our minds and into a form that we can see and easily share with others. So, ang pinaka-idea ng ang kagandahan ng systems thinking, may tools, gagamitin mo para i-visualize natin, isulat natin yung nasa isip nyo. Para, you can easily, okay, you can easily share it with others. Kasi, my dear students, yung nasa isip natin, hindi naman kaya nating i-share ng madalian sa ibang tao without putting it in a paper, Okay? Or in any medium na pwede nating ma-share sa kanila. So, ang kagandahan nito, ma-visualize natin yung, yung nasa isip nyo and ma-share nyo sila sa ibang tao. Okay po? So, we can better understand uh, current behaviors of a system and ways to operate within a system to create a desired change. So, for example, uh, may problema ka na gustong ma-solve Okay, using the different systems thinking tools, uh, you will be able to solve that problem. Okay, systematically. Okay, so may intindihan nyo ako as we go along with our discussion. So for now, this is just an introduction about the approach that we are going to ano, about the approach that we are going to utilize in this subject. Okay? So let me continue. So ito yung sinasabi kong example. So by the way, this is an output Okay, output ito ng mga students ko nung ano, last semester. So, dito nakita nila yung mga connections. So, ito yung example ng tool. This is a um, causal link. Okay, ito po ay causal link na nakagawa ng loop. Okay, so ito yung tool na, na, na sinasabi ko, tinutukoy ko. Dito, kung mapapansin nyo dito, kinunek nila yung human population growth sa deforestation rate, ayan, sa carbon dioxide emission, sa global warming, sa climate change, natural calamities, <laughs> biodiversity loss, food shortage, hunger, health problems, hanggang bumalik sa death rate. Okay, so, ito yung gusto kong sabihin na sa environment natin, ito, these are variables in our environment. So, using the systems thinking tools, may intindihan nyo kung ano yung connection nito. Tuturuan ko kayo kung para saan yung blue arrow, kung para saan yung red arrow, ayan, yung kung para saan yung mga yan. Okay? Kasi meron yung ano, meron yung rules in how to, ano, put arrows in that, ano, tool. Okay? Another, ayan, this is also an output. Ayan, so, feeling nyo, ano ba naman yan, ma'am? Hindi naman namin yan naiintindihan. So, I will make sure na ba? Tapos ang semester na to alam nyo na kung paano mag-connect-connect ng mga variables. Kinonek ang poverty sa global warming, kinonek ang ang deforestation sa sa biodiversity loss, kinonek ang natural calamity sa food shortage, ano pa ba? Yung air pollution sa death rate, ayan. So, yung uh, kinonek yung human population growth sa climate change. Ayan. So, yun yung mga interconnection na sinasabi ko kung bakit kailangan natin ng systems thinking in, in studying environmental science. Kasi po, sobrang dami ng interconnections sa ating paligid. Okay? So, napaka-interesting nito kasi I know uh, you will not just learn the, the, the concepts but you will also learn their ano their relationships okay so i'm so excited to ano to teach you how to make these diagrams okay so ayan 
So, we come now to the second part. Ayan. So, I hope you are still with me. So, the second part of this uh, discussion is, is all about the reason why we need to study environmental science. So, bakit kailangan nating pag-aralin yung environmental science? So, first of all, as of now, okay, I want you to to imagine Okay, so di ba sabi ni ano si nang si Einstein ba yung nagsabi noon? So imagination is the highest form of knowledge. So I would like you to imagine. So as of now, the global human population is around 7 billion. Can you imagine that 7 billion? <laughs> yeah. So the earth is now serving 7 billion people. Okay, yeah, ganyan po kadami ang tao na nasa ibabaw ng earth. Okay? Okay, so can you imagine how Earth is carrying all of us? 7 billion na tao, pasan-pasan ng Earth. Okay, so can you imagine if all the things that we've been doing will be summed up? For example, nagtapon ako ng basura. At yung buong 7 billion na yun, nagtapon ng basura sa body of, body, bodies of water. Okay, ano yung magiging epekto ngayon sa Mother Earth? Okay, so this is one of the reasons why we need to study environmental science Para maintindihan natin kung ano yung pinaggagawa natin sa ating Mother Earth or sa ating environment Okay, also, ito po, so gusto ko pa itong ipakita sa inyo So as of now, nandito tayo sa part ng 20, between 2015 and 2030 so, pag dumating na yung year 2030, okay, so the human population growth is inevitable, okay, dadating po tayo sa 8.5 billion. Hanggang sa 2050, magiging po yung 9.7 billion, okay, pagdating ng uh, 2100, darating po yan ng 11.2 billion. So, ano man, anong, anong, ano nito, anong relevance nito? So, sabi dito, as the population of the world has grown and the exchange of people and goods between countries has increased okay pag dumami daw yung population growth yung palitan ng mga yung palitan ng mga kalakal ng mga produkto okay pag tumaas yun ayan kaakibat po noon many environmental problems have become global in nature so hindi na lang siya problema ng Pilipinas hindi na lang siya problema ng ng China, for example sa China, super polluted na hindi lang yun problema nila kasi yung air, hindi mo naman yun contain, so magiging problema na yun ng mga nearby countries okay, so habang dumadami ang, ang human population di ba may, may question doon sa ano nyo po, sa pretest nyo na anong relationship ng pag madumami ang human population okay, so of course dadami din po yung environmental problems Okay, so that is directly related. The higher the human population, the higher the environmental problems. Okay, so another here, so isa yun sa rason kung bakit kailangan natin pag-aralan ang environmental science para maintindihan natin yung magiging epekto natin. Okay, yung mga tao. Also, to understand how nature works. So by studying environmental science, my dear students, may intindihan nyo kung paano nag-work yung ating mother nature. Okay? Also, to understand the various interactions of the different components of our environment. So we need to study environmental science para maintindihan nyo kung paano nag interact yung air, water, land, and biosphere. Okay, so kapag ba pinulyot mo yung water, okay, pag pinulyot mo yung water, do you think wala ba yung epekto sa air? Wala ba yung epekto sa land? Wala ba yung epekto sa mga mga all uh, all forms of life? Ayan. So by studying environmental science, malalaman nyo kung ano yung mga epekto nun. Okay? And also to find out how humans affect our environment. So connected ito doon sa sa ano na human population growth. Ano yung epekto natin? Tayong human, ano yung ginawa na natin sa ating environment? Okay? So these are the effects, okay? I will show you pictures of the effects that of what we have done for the past years. So eto ba? Ayan. So these are some of the environmental issues we have now climate change, air pollution, ayan. 
So, eto yung mga ginawa natin sa ating as of now, eto na yung current na nangyayari sa ating ano, sa ating mundo. Okay? So, meron tayo ditong ano, meron tayong overpopulation, ayan, shortage ng water, ayan, sobrang daming basura, uh, madalas na pagbaha, pagkatunaw ng mga yelo, ano pa ba, madaming plastics, ayan, uh, madaming pollutant sa air, ayan, so eto po, I would like you to, ano, to, <laughs> to reflect, yan na yung current situation ng ating earth, ng ating environment, so, ang tanong, Meron ba tayong magagawa? Okay? Can we do something to at least ano, to at least um, save our mother earth? Kasi talaga mother earth is ano really dying dahil doon sa mga pinaggagawa natin for the past years. Okay? So another reason, okay? We need to study environmental science for a sustainable future. Okay? So may question mark 'yan. Sustainable future? Okay? So ano ba tong sinasawag nating sustainable future na ito? Okay? Uh, darating ba yung time, yung mga next generation, meron pa kaya silang malalanghap na sariwang hangin? May inom na malinis na tubig? Okay? So, we need to study environmental science para masustain natin yung magiging future ng ating mga anak, ng ating magiging apo. Ayan. So, uh, lagi nyong tatandaan, every time na may gagawin kayo, my dear students, lagi nyong tatandaan, ano yung magiging epekto nito in the long run? Okay? Magsusunog kayo ng basura. What will be the effect of that in the long run? Okay? Magtatapon kayo ng mga basura sa bodies of water. What will be the effect of that in the long run? Okay? So, we need to study environmental science for a sustainable future. And, para ma-attain yan, ayan, we need to study the third part of this discussion. So, we need to study the different environmental ethics So, ano ba yung mga environmental ethics na meron tayo? Okay, so nasa third part na tayo. Ayan. So, ano ba yun? What is environmental ethics? So, first of all, we need to define what is ethics. Okay? So, pag sinabi nating ethics, it is a branch of philosophy. ba? Diba? Sabi ko nga sa inyo, um, environmental science is an interdisciplinary field. Hindi lang siya environment, hindi lang siya science, kundi meron ding ethics, meron ding law. So, ngayon, tinatouch na natin yung ano yung ethics okay which is a branch of philosophy that seeks to define what is right and what is wrong so yung ethics daw yan daw yung nagsasabi kung tama ba or mali yung iyong ginagawa okay so this can help us to understand what actions are wrong and why they are wrong so yung mga ethical ethical consideration Okay? Yung mga ethical considerations na yun, yun yung mag, ano, tutulong sa atin para maintindihan natin bakit yung mga gawa natin, pagtapo ng basura, pagsunog ng, ng, ah, pagsunog ng mga plastics, ay mali. And bakit sila maling-mali? Okay? So, ito yung magpapaintindi sa atin nun. Ano po? So, this can be very complicated. Yes, it will be. Okay? Napaka-complicated niya, but this is very interesting. Okay? So, sabi dito, Ethical issues dealing with the environment are especially complex because sometimes it appears that what is good for people conflicts with what is good for the environment. So, napakaganda nito ano na to. Napakaganda nitong phrase na ito kasi sabi daw dito, ethical issues dealing with the environment ay napakakomplikado nga. It's very complicated kasi minsan yung kung anong makakabuti sa tao, okay? Yun naman ay hindi makakabuti sa environment. Okay? For example, yung pagpuno ng punong kahoy para sa pagbahay natin, okay, di ba? So makakabuti siya sa tao kasi may bahay, hindi mauulanan, hindi maiinitan, okay? Pero sa side ng environment, hindi yun maganda kasi di ba, alam natin yung pinaka very ano Uh, one of the most important ano roles of um, of trees ayan so it absorbs carbon dioxide okay na nagbibigay sa atin ng oxygen para tayo ay mabuhay ayan and isa pa nag ano siya na sinisipsip niya yung mga tubig para mabawasan yung pagbabaha so nakikita niyo yun so mabuti sa tao pero hindi mabuti sa environment yung pagpupuno ng punong kahoy pagpuputol ng punong kahoy 
Okay? So, ito yun. Kaya meron tayong pinatawag na environmental ethics. Ano ba yung, yung pinaniniwalaan mong tama? Okay? So, there are different environmental ethics. So, in this environmentally conscious times, most people agree that we need to be environmentally responsible. I hope you will agree with this. Na sa panahon ngayon, na talagang ano, degraded, uh, degraded na talaga yung ating environment, the earth, the mother earth. So, we really need to be environmentally responsible. Okay? So, the primary goal of environmental ethics is that it's not simply to convince us that we should be concerned about the environment. So, ang role daw ng environmental ethics, hindi lang simply to convince us, Uy, you need to be environmentally responsible because the mother earth is dying. Okay? But instead, okay, it focuses on the moral foundation. Take note ha? Moral foundation of environmental responsibility and how this responsibility extends Okay? Ano ba yung moral mo when it comes to caring the environment? Okay? Are you environmental uh, responsible ka ba sa mga pinaggagawa mo sa iyong paligid? Ayan, so hindi lang pwedeng sabihin na, ay, we need to be environmental responsible. How far? Okay? So hanggang kailan, hanggang saan yan aabot yung pagiging environmentally ano mo, responsible? So yun yung pinaka-role ng ethics. Okay, so igaguide tayo kung ano ba yung tama at dapat. So there are different philosophical approaches to environmental ethics. So the different environmental philosophers have developed a three. Okay, so far there are three. So nasa pretest niyo to. So I hope na kuha niyo to. So there are three theoretical approaches to help us see more clearly our ethical responsibilities. For, uh, concerning the environment. So, yung tatlong yun, etong tatlong po ito, these are the three primary theories of moral responsibility to the environment. So, eto yung pinaguhugutan. So, namely, ayan, so we have anthro, anthropocentrism, we have the biocentrism, and ecocentrism. So, iisa-isahin natin yun. So, Again, these are the three philosophical approaches to environmental ethics. So, anthropo anthropocentrism from the word anthro. Ayan. So, next, biocentrism from the word bio. Okay? And also, third one, ecocentrism from the word eco. Okay? Take note of anthro, bio, and eco. Kasi doon sila nagkakakaiba-iba. Okay? So, let us start with the anthropocentrism. Okay? So, the anthropocentrism... Of course, from the word anthro, which means human, it is a human-centered environmental ethics. So, ibig sabihin itong uh, type of environmental ethics na ito, ano siya, nakasentro lang sa tao. Okay? So, ano ba yung sinasabi nitong ethics na ito? All environmental responsibility is derived from human interest alone. So, dito sa paniniwalang ito, tao lang ang importante. Hindi importante ang environment. Wala akong pakialam kung ano mangyari sa environment. Basta ang tao ay, ay nagbe-benefit. So, ganun yung paniniwala ng anthropo, uh, anthropocentrism. Okay? So, parang dito, yung tao, puprotektahan niya lang yung environment Okay? Kapag meron siyang ano, benefit na makukuha doon. Okay? So, puprotect na. Protect only when it benefits humans. Okay? So, yung environment provide value to humans. So, ang, ang, ano lang, ang sense lang ng environment, ang sense ng environment is to provide all the things needed by the human. So, without considering yung welfare ng environment. So, sabi dito, according to this ethics, only human beings are morally significant. Okay, yung mga, mga tao lang <laughs> morally significant and have direct moral standings. Yung environment, wa, wa pakals dito ang environment. So, the value of environment lies in its instrumental worth for humans' manipulation. So, yung value ng environment sa anthropocentrism ethics, ano po siya? Uh, instrumental value lang. So, okay, kung hindi ka namin mapapakinabangan, okay, sige, goodbye. Doon naman kami sa may mga mapapakinabangan kami. So, parang ganun yung idea. So, it's really a human-centered. Okay, so our environmental duties are derived both from the immediate benefit that people receive from the environment and 
from the benefit the future generations of people will receive. So, parang makatao lang. Okay? Hindi siya makakalikasan. <laughs> okay? So, etong ethics na yan, ito yung nagsasabi na, okay, dapat in every decision na gagawin, dapat yung welfare ng tao ang palaging kinoconsider. So, that is anthropocentrism. So, another another environmental ethics Okay, so biocentrism. So, eto naman, uh, from the word bio, which means life, it is a life-centered environmental ethics. So, kung doon sa anthropocentrism, although tao ay may buhay, okay, dito naman sa biocentrism, all forms of life. Okay? All forms of life have an inherent right to exist. So, lahat ng may buhay ay may karapatang mag-exist. So, eto naman yung pinaka-idea niya. Yung tao should protect and respect all living organisms because meron silang inherent value. So, doon sa anthropocentrism, tao lang ang may value dito, pati yung animals, yung plants, ayan, may value sila. Kaya nga, tinawag na biocentrism. So, some believe that we have a greater responsibility to protect animal species than plant species. Okay, so naniniwala ang biocentrism ethics na mas kailangan nating protektahan yung animal species than plants. And a greater responsibility to protect mammals than invertebrates. Okay, so mas importante daw yung mga mammals than invertebrates according to this ethics. So another, another group of biocentrists, okay, take the view that all living organisms have an equal right to exist. So, parang ano siya, basta ang pinaka-idea ng biocentrism, lahat ng may buhay, mapabakterya man yan, fish, ano pa, lahat ng, ano, ng living things, ayan. So, lahat po yan ay, ano, fungi man yan, ayan. So, lahat sila ay merong right to exist. Okay, so, okay ka pa ba dyan? Ayan, so, I hope you are still watching this video. Okay, and I hope you are, ano, learning in this, ano, discussion. Okay, so another, okay, the last, the last environmental ethics, ito yung pinakamakatao, pinakamakakalikasan, okay, we have now the ecocentrism. So, from the word eco, ayan, so it maintains the environment, okay, it maintains that the environment deserves direct moral consideration and not consideration that is merely derived from human or animal interests. So, dito sa ethics na ito, nagkaroon ng boses ang environment. So, hindi pwedeng tao lang. Okay? Hindi pwedeng yung mga may buhay lang ang mag-exist. So, dapat yung environment, okay, di ba? From the word eco, ecosystem, ayan. So, dapat pati yung environment mag-coexist with those living things. Okay? So, another, this ethics, ayan, ito po yung ito po yung sinasabi dito na yung human being, we should protect and respect the ecosystems in addition to the organism they contain, okay, sabi nila niniwala sila na yung ecosystems have inherent value so, naniniwala ang ecocentrism na lahat ng bagay na meron tayo sa mundo lahat yan ay importante lahat yan ay merong karapatang mag-exist Okay, so yun yung pinapaniwalaan ng ecocentrism. Okay, also, sabi nila, environment, environment itself, not just the living organisms that inhabit it, has moral worth. So, pinahalagahan na po dito yung, ano, yung kalikasan. So, hindi na lang tumakatao, kundi makakalikasan na din siya. Okay, so systemic value that a particular ecosystem possesses as the matrix, matrix that make biological life possible. So, dito, pinapahalagahan nila na yung mga living things, okay, excuse me, so yung mga living things, hindi daw mabubuhay without that ecosystem or yung environment na ginagalawan natin. Tama nga naman, sino ba naman ang mabubuhay kung walang air? Sino ba ang mabubuhay kung walang water? Walang land na pagtataniman ng mga pagkain? So, indeed, life would not be possible without our environment. So, sabi nga dito, Mother Earth should have the same right to life as any mother. Ayan. So, napakaganda nito. Kasi, yung Mother Earth natin, siya yung talagang tinutukoy na ecosystem. So, meron din siyang karapatang mabuhay. Okay? At karapatang protektohan at 
irrespeto. So, that is according to the ecocentrism as environmental ethics. So, ito so far ang pinakamaganda. Okay? Kasi hindi lang tao ang mahalaga. Although nila lang tayo ng Diyos. Okay? Pati yung environment natin, nila lang din siya. So, kailangan natin bigyan ng ano, equal rights. Okay? Para mag-exist. Okay po? So, according to Aldo, Aldo Leopold, ayan, so, he is an economy, uh, ecologist, who is one of the earliest and, and most well-known spokesperson for ecocentrism. So, isa siya sa kilala, isa siya sa kilalang ano, uh, environmentalist, okay, na nag uh, na, nagpo-promote ng ecocentrism environmental ethics. So, ayan po, yan yung picture niya. So, sabi niya dito, we need to see ourselves as members of a community that also includes the land and the water. So, kailangan daw nating tingnan yung ating sarili, we human being, na dapat tingnan natin that we are members of community. Okay? Kasama ang ulan, water, air. Okay? So, he claims that a thing is right when it tends to preserve the integrity, stability, and beauty of the biotic community. It is wrong So, eto yung nagsasabi kung tama ba o mali yung gagawin mo. Sabi niya dito, tama daw ang gagawin mo. If yung, yung action na yun, it will preserve the integrity, stability, and the beauty of biotic community or yung may mga buhay. Okay? It is wrong when, when it tends otherwise, we abuse land because we regard it as a commodity belonging to us. So, kung, kung iisipin mo na, ay, yung lupang iyan, biyaya yan sa atin ng Diyos. So, kailangan natin niyang abusuhin. So, hindi na siya tama. So, kailangan natin pangalagaan according to this ano, environmental ethics na kailangan natin siyang paglagaan to the point na mapipreserve natin yung integrity, yung stability, and the beauty of nature na binigay sa atin ng, ano, ng puong may kapal. Ayan. So, We should consider is ano we belong to that community hindi yung atin yung community so kailangan natin silang pangalagaan ano po so when we see land as a community to which we belong so pag nakita daw natin na yung lupa um is a community na kung saan kasama tayo we may begin to use it with love and respect so kung hindi mo siya nakikita as commodity na ay yung lupang yan Uh, magagamit ko lang yan sa aking pangsariling buhay. Pero, pag nakita mo na daw yung land na yun, okay, in which you belong, okay, that is the time you will, ano, you will use it with love and respect to the point na hindi mo siya abusuhin. Okay, you will use it with integrity, okay, so you will preserve it. Ayan, so that is according to Aldo Leopold. Okay, so talagang ano siya, advocate siya ng ecocentrism. Okay, hindi anthropocentrism, hindi biocentrism, but ecocentrism. Okay? So, okay, so we're now on the fourth part. So, sana ma ano, ma-cover ko lang siya ng one hour. Ayan, so we come now to the fourth part. So, ngayon, enough ba yung environmental ethics to to attain a sustainable environment? So, Titingnan natin. So enough ba 'yon? So tingnan natin itong environmental attitudes. Okay, sabi kasi dito, okay? So the fourth part of this discussion is about the environmental attitudes. So sabi dito, it is never easy to act in accordance with one particular ethic in everything. So hindi daw madali na gumawa ng isang bagay na uh, in accordance lang sa isang particular na ethic. Okay? So Ethical commitments pull in different directions at different times. So, yung pagiging morally right ng mga ginagawa nyo, hindi lang siya nakadepende sa isang bagay. So, meron din siyang iba't ibang bagay. So, which means that because of this difficulties, it is sometimes easier to talk in terms of general attitudes or approaches to the environment rather than in terms of particular ethics. So, di ba, parang napaka, kung napakahirap naman, sabi ng ganitong ethics, i-consider daw yung, consider daw yung environment at yung tao. Sabi naman ng ganitong ethics, i-consider lang yung lahat ng may buhay ay may karapatang mag-exist. 
Okay? So, ano ba talaga? So, ano pa ba yung ibang resort natin para malaman natin tama yung ating ginagawa? Here comes environmental attitudes. Okay? So, ano ba tong mga attitudes na ito? So, medyo nag nahirapan kayo dito. So, di ba doon sa pre-test nyo, pinapili ko sa'yo kayo kung alin doon yung mga ano, environmental attitudes. So, eto na yung ano, revealing stage. <laughs> okay, so, there are three environmental attitudes or approaches to environment. So, first of all is development. So, this is an attitude. Okay, environmental attitude. Another is preservation. And lastly, conservation. Ayan. So, etong tatlong ito, these are the most important environmental attitudes. So, let us start with the development. Okay? So, sabi daw dito, these attitudes reflect a person's ethical commitment. So, kung alin yung attitude na pinagde-develop natin, kung ano yung attitude na pinapakita natin, ito daw ay magre-reflect sa ating ethical commitment. Okay? Hindi na lang dahil doon sa environmental ethics, kundi dahil dito sa attitude na ipapakita natin, manifest natin. Okay? So, let us start with the development. So, sabi dito, development is the most anthropocentric approach. So, this is a human-centered. So, katulad nung anthropocentric ethics, ito po ay human-centered lang ang development. Okay? It assumes that the human race is and should be the master of nature and that the earth and its resources exist solely for our benefit and pleasure indeed anthropocentric din talaga po ito so sige develop tayo ng develop para sa kapakanan ng mga tao so ganon ang development this is an attitude Okay? So, sige, papatayo lang tayo ng mga buildings, patayo tayo ng madaming ano, uh, putuli na yung mga puno na yan in exchange of ano of mega vaccination site, ganyan. So, more on ano lang, development. Sige, develop lang ng develop. So, sabi dito, this is reinforced by the capitalist work ethic which dictate the humans should create value for themselves by putting their labor into both land and materials in order to convert them into marketable products. So, ang attitude na ito more on, sige, kikita ba ako dyan? Okay, sige, pagpatuloy yung project na yan. So, kung hindi yan kikita, palitan yan. So, more on development lang. Okay, so wala akong pakialam kung madaming punong kahoy ang mapuputol dyan basta itayo yung project na yan para ma-develop yung city. Ayun, so ganun yung idea ng ano attitude ng development. Okay? So also it suggests that the improvements in the human condition require converting even more of nature over human use. Oh, so itong etong attitude na to uh, kahit hindi naman nakakaano sa kanila pero ayan yung mga subdivisions ayan so um, tinanggal yung mga trees para mapalitan ng ano ng mga bahay na magagamit ng tao so more on development 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 okay the approach thinks highly of human creativity and imagination and holds that continual economic growth is itself a moral idea for society. So, naniniwala itong attitude na ito na mas importante yung economic growth. Okay? Para sa ating sosyodad. And yung environment natin ay hindi importante. Kaya develop lang tayo ng develop. So, sabi dito, the environment has value only in so far as human beings economically utilize it. So, napaka-anthropocentric din talaga ng approach na ito. This mindset has very often accompanied the process of industrialization and modernization in a country. So, ito yung pag sinabi nating development, kaakibat na niyan yung industrialization, yung modernization, ayan. So, magkakaano sila, magkakaword. So, develop, 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 ayan. So, this is one of the ano, uh, most human-centered ano, environmental attitude. So, another... The second environmental attitude is the attitude of preservation. Ayan. So, medyo gumanda-ganda naman dito. So, ito naman, this is the most ecocentric approach. Ito naman, pabor naman ito sa environment. ba? So, ito naman yung, yung 
eh wag mo yang ano i-preserve natin yang ano na yan yang ecosystem na yan kasi ano eh sayang ng mga tree sayang mawawalan ng mga bahay yung mga animals ayan so preservation attitude naman yon so rather than seek to convert all the nature over to human uses preservationists want to see large portion of nature to be preserved and intact. Ayan. So, eto yung yung attitude na, ay, wag natin yung puputulin kasi ganito ganyan. Ayan. So, mas importante yung nature kaysa sa tao. So, nature has intrinsic value or inherent worth apart from human uses. So, aside sa value niya for human, ano, human consumption, meron pa siyang ibang worth. Okay? That is according to this, ano, attitude. So, we need to preserve our environment. So, number two, ay another. So, preservation, sabi dito, nature not as a commodity but a companion. Okay? So, sabi dito sa preservation, hindi natin ititake na, na yung ating ating environment is a commodity na gagamitin lang natin for our consumption pero dapat i-consider natin siya as companion. Okay? Kasama-sama natin. So, naniniwala din ito that nature is sacred whether or not resources are scarce. Okay? Kahit daw na may pagkukulang, we need ko to consider nature as sacred. So, merong mga philosophers like uh, Emerson and Thoreau, okay, thought of nature as full of divinity. Okay? Napaka-divine ng nature. Okay? Binigay yan sa atin. So, kailangan natin yang i-preserve. So, they also believe that nature is beautiful and restorative and should be preserved to ensure that wild place exists for humans to hike, camp, fish, or just enjoy some solitude. Okay? So, naniniwala itong mga mga preserve, ano ito? Mga philosophers na ito na preserve natin para, ano, para may yung mga next na generation, meron pa silang ma, masisilayang magandang ano, magandang Ano, kapaligiran. Ayan. So, ngayon, we come now to the third attitude. Ayan. So, meron naman tayong tinatawag na conservation attitude. So, ano ba tong conservation attitude na to? So, this is an approach, okay, that tends to strike a balance between unrestrained development and preservation. So, etong attitude na ito, eto yung nagka ano kumapagit na kung nagaaway yung development and and preservation yung conservation nasa gitna siya siya yung ano siya yung referee kung baga ayan so anthropocentric this is anthropocentric and geos um ecocentric okay so anthropocentric in the sense that it is it is interested in promoting human well-being. So, itong conservation, pinopromote niya yung well-being ng mga tao. Ano ba yung makakabuti sa tao? And at the same time, okay, at the same time, my dear students, uh, uh, conserv uh, conservationists tend to consider a wider range of long-term human goods in their decisions about environmental management. So, kung baga yan, yung mga tree planting, Ayan, so mga tree planting activities, okay, three R's, ano pa ba? So, those are ways on how we can conserve our environment. Kasi, itong attitude na ito, naniniwala in ito na yung tao, yung well-being ng tao is important and at the same time, yung well-being ng environment is also important. So, dapat yung mga decisions na gagawin ay ang cord doon sa ikakabuti ng, na ng nature and ikakabuti ng tao. So, yun yung napakaganda nitong attitude na to kasi ano siya. So, sabi dito, many hunters are considered ano, conservationists. Okay, yung mga hunters daw, they are both biocentric and anthropocentric elements to their thinking. Okay? So, hindi lang nila, sabi dito, ethically sensitive hunters often see the value of non-human animal species and put ethical constraints on the way they hunt them. So, kung ikaw, example, di ba yung hunter, ang pinaka-ano nila, ang pinaka-goal nila is makahanap ng pagkain. Okay? So, sabi dito, even though a hunter tends to think that the human interest in harvest, harvesting the meat ultimately overrides the animal's interest in staying alive. 
Okay? So, he or she often believes that the animal has a place on the landscape and that the world is a better place if it contains healthy population of wild animals. So, kung baga ilagay niyo yung sarili niyo as a hunter, so pumunta kayo doon sa kagubatan. So, para ang thinking dito is i-harvest mo lang yung yung wild animal na kailangan mo lang on that time, hindi ka mag-harvest ng sobrang dami kasi naniniwala ka pa din sa sarili mo na hindi dapat natin ubusin yung wild animals kasi meron silang ginagampanan sa ating environment. So, parang yung idea. So, ang um, mga hunters are example ng conservationists. Okay, so, hindi lang para ikaw ay mabusog, para ikaw ay mabuhay, you need to also consider those wild animals. Dapat din ba silang mabuhay? Okay po? So, <clears throat> so, so far, <laughs> so, those are the three environmental attitudes. Okay, so, ngayon, ano ba tong sustainable development? How can we attain this sustainable development? Gamit yung environmental ethics, gamit yung mga environmental attitudes. Okay, so, ano ba to? So, sabi dito, sustainable development is defined as meeting the needs of current generations without compromising the ability of future generations to meet theirs. Okay, so matagal nyo na itong naririnig. So, ang pinaka-idea ng sustainable development, so kung mapapansin nyo, dati, doon sa mga attitude, yung development, puro lang human. Okay? Puro lang development, si build lang ng build without considering the nature. So, we need sustainable development para namimit natin yung current needs natin pero hindi natin nako compromise yung yung needs ng mga future generations. Need saan? Sa malinis na tubig, sa malinis na hangin, okay? Sa healthy na land or soil. Okay, so hindi natin mako-compromise 'yon. Okay po? So this is a middle ground that seeks to promote appropriate development. Take note of that ha, it's appropriate development in order to alleviate poverty while still preserving the ecological health of the landscape. So, so far, para siyang ano, um, conservation or, uh, conservationists ano, attitude okay, when it comes to environment. Hindi lang puro development, okay, dapat ma-preserve din natin yung ecological health ng ating environment na ginagalawan. Okay, so itong sustainable development, hindi lang siya nakafocus sa ano sa environmental issues pero naka-focus din siya to develop the well-being of humans okay so ayan po so according to the ano to the United Nations 2005 World Summit document itong sustainable development refers to the interdependent and mutually reinforcing pillars of uh, sustainable development are the following so nagkaroon ng ano ng summit noong 2005 okay sa United yung United Nations okay so ito yung kinonsider nilang pillars ng sustainable development so you can see here to attain sustainable development kailangan i-consider ang social environmental and economical factors so paano ba to nag-aano nag, paano sila nag-interact ayan para ma-attain ang sustainable development dapat yung social social place at environment okay environment na ginagalawan ng tao ay livable hindi siya degraded hindi siya magulo ayan so nagkakaroon ng inter uh, interlap dito sa social and environmental also when it comes to economic and environmental dapat viable and when it comes to economic and social dapat siya ay fair okay walang dapat pantay-pantay lang Okay, hindi pwedeng kung sino lang yung mayayaman, sila yung makakakaroon ng maraming access sa resources. So that is according to this, ano, to this framework para daw ma-attain yung sustainable development na hindi naman nadidegrade ang ating ano, hindi nadidegrade yung ating environment, hindi na apektuhan yung well-being ng tao at hindi na apektuhan yung economic uh, economy ng ating bansa or even the the world. Okay, so kailangan nating i-consider yung tatlong ito to really attain that sustainable development. Okay, so 
So, mapapansin nyo dito, um, to attain this sustainable development, we really need to consider the different environmental ethics and the different environmental attitudes, which is na-discuss ko na siya dito sa discussion na ito. Ano po? So, napaka-interesting ng environmental science kasi ano siya, hindi lang siya isang field, okay? Napaka-encompassing. Okay po? So, malapit na tayong matapos because we now on the fifth part. Ayan. So, I hope you're still listening. Kasi itong fifth part, ito na ang isa sa pinaka the best part ng presentation na ito. Because it talks about the different environmental principles. Okay? Itong mga principles na ito ay talagang ma-observe nyo to sa inyong environment. Okay? So, there are seven. Okay, so there are seven environmental principles. So the first one is no, nature knows best. Okay, isa-isahin natin yan. Ano? The second one, all forms of life are important. The third one, everything is connected to everything else. Okay, so that is the third environmental principle. So the third, fourth environmental principle, everything changes. Lahat ng bagay, tao, sa paligid nyo, lahat yan nagbabago. Ayan. So, number five, everything must go somewhere. So, isa-isa natin to. And number six, ours is a finite earth. So, yung earth daw natin ay may hangganan. And lastly, the most ano, beautiful okay, uh, environmental principle is that nature is beautiful and we are the stewards of God's creation. Okay, so napakaganda ng nature at tayo yung ginawa, dinikha ng may kapal to really ano, protect that God's creation. So let us start with the first principle para mas maintindihan nyo. Malapit na to po ito, malapit na itong matapos. So I hope you will still ano, finish this video until the end. Okay, so the first environmental principle is that nature knows best. Okay, so sabi dito, we humans have to understand that nature okay understand nature and follow its rules because if we want to ensure a continuous and steady supply of resources one must not go against natural processes so ito yung sinasabing alam ng kalikasan kung ano ang makakabuti sa kanya okay for example sobrang init na ng ating mundo Okay, so alam niya kung anong makakabuti sa kanya, i-release yung init na yon. So in what way? Okay, so that in that way nakakaranas tayo ng intense heat, ayan, intense na mga wildfires, ayan, forest fires, ayan. So kasi nga Mother Nature knows best. Alam niya kung anong makakabuti sa kanya. Okay? Also, if we humans cause any disruption in the cycle of nature, this can bring imbalance to our ecosystem. Okay? Example, putulin natin yung mga punong yan. Okay? So, dahil dinisarap natin yung, yung kalikasan, babawi yan at babawi yan sa atin. Okay? In what way? Madalas na pagbabaha, madalas na landslide. Ayan, because Mother Nature knows best. Okay? So, Ayan, example nga, intense flooding due to cutting of trees. So, isa yan sa mga ganti. <laughs> yung, yung madalang na pagbabaha, isa yan sa ganti ng ating ano, mother nature. So, be careful. Okay, mother nature knows best. Okay, so let us uh, proceed with the next environmental principle. All forms of life are important. So, uh, medyo na-discuss ko na to doon sa mga iba't ibang ethics and environmental, ano, environmental attitudes. So, sabi dito, each organism plays a fundamental role in nature. So, kahit yung mga langgam, <laughs> yung mga langaw, yung mga ipis, ayan, meron silang role na ginagampanan sa ating ecosystem. Okay? So, all living organisms were created for a purpose in relation to humans, other species on earth, and global ecosystem in general. So, ikaw, 
you are a living organism so you are created by God with purpose so lagi mong tatandaan yan ha so kung feeling mo uh, feeling mo wala ka ng silbi sa mundo wag mong wag mong iisipin yan kasi lahat ng ginawa ni Papa God lahat tayo ay may purpose sa ngayon hindi mo pa man yun naiintindihan but darating ka sa part ng buhay mo na malalaman mo yung purpose mo ako so far at this my age uh, parang feeling ko alam ko na yung purpose ko sa buhay okay because I, I enjoy what I really doing which is I love teaching okay so parang feeling ko yun yung calling ko talaga so yeah that's why I really put my ano, my heart and soul whenever that I'm, I am teaching my ano, my students so kaya kayo kung feeling nyo pasan nyo na ang buong daigdig Okay? So, imagine nyo naman kung paano tayo pinapasa ng ating Mother, Mother Earth. 7 billion na tao. Okay? So, doon sa 7 billion na yun, ikaw ginawa ka, nabuhay ka sa mundong ibabaw, meron kang purpose sa buhay. Opo? So, example. So, sabi dito, um, it is easy to appreciate the beautiful organism like butterflies and bees. Especially if if one knows their important role in pollination. Diba? Siguro sa inyo, hindi nyo na-appreciate yung role ng ano, mga bees. Okay? And ng mga butterflies. Ayan. So, without their effort, ayan, <laughs> hindi po magkakaroon ng pollination. Okay? Pwede siyang ma madala ng winds. Pero yung talagang process of pollination, talagang yung role ng butterfly tsaka bees, ano, are very, ano, very important. Okay? Para ma-undergo ma ma yung, ano, yung process na yun. Okay, so, bi kaya itong environmental principle na ito na indeed, all forms of life are important. Kaya wag na wag mong anuhin ang iyong buhay. Okay, meron kang purpose sa buhay. Tandaan mo yan lagi, ha? Okay, so third, okay, everything is connected to everything else. So, itong uh, environmental principle na ito, ito din yung nagsasabi na, Ano, interrelatedness is indeed a core concept in environmental science. Kasi sabi dito, in, <coughs> excuse me, in an ecosystem, all biotic and abiotic components interact. So, di ba, sa ecosystem, tayo, we are considered as biotic, then yung lahat ng nakapaligid sa atin na bagay, those are considered abiotic components. So, nag interact tayo with each other to ensure that the system is sustained. Tama ba? So, we interact with our environment para masustain natin yung system ng earth. Okay? So, any interruption from outside may cause an imbalance and collapsing of the system. Diba naaalala nyo? Kanina sabi ko, yung earth is a system. Binubuo siya ng iba't ibang components. Water, air, land, life. Ayan. So, kapag may binago ka doon, so sabi dito, everything is connected to everything else. Halimbawa, pinulyot mo yung air. Okay? So, magkakaroon yan ng domino effect. Mapupulyot yung water, mapupulyot yung land. Siyempre, kapag pulyotid yung water, yung, yung tinitirahan ng mga fish, okay? yung tinitirahan ng mga fish, of course, yung fish na yun ay magiging contaminated. Pag contaminated yung fish na yun at kinain mo yung fish na yun, good luck. Okay? So, anong magiging effect nun sa health natin? Okay? And pag yung health natin ay naapektuhan, how would it affect our life? Okay? Our relationship with our family? ba Magkakaroon na ng problema. Ma-hospitalize ka na hanggang sa ikaw ay mamatay. So, nagsimula lang yun doon sa pagpulyot natin ng air. O, oh, tapos naging, namatay ka na dahil lang doon. Ayan. Kasi nga po, everything is interconnected to everything else. For example, the trees in the forest are home to ferns, orchids, birds, insects, and mammals. O, oh, imagine mo, tanggalin mo yung mga trees na yun. Kumusta naman yung mga orchids? Kumusta naman yung mga birds, yung mga insects, and yung mga mammals na nakatera doon? O, oh, di mamamatay sila, may extinct sila. So pag na-extinct sila, okay, what will happen to the to the ano, to the food web or food chain? Hmm. Wala na tayong makakain na ano na mga meat. Okay, wala na tayong makakain ng mga plants kasi nga sinira na natin yung habitat nila. Ayan, so ayan. So another, when these plants and animal dies, ayan, so their products of decomposition contribute to soil fertility. Ayan. So mamatay man yung mga plants and animals, even tayo, 
Okay? Pag namatay tayo, okay, meron pa din tayong halaga. Ayan. So, through the process of decomposition, magiging tayong pataba sa, sa, ano, sa soil. Oh, so, pag mataba yung soil, okay, so, ibig sabihin, ano doon, tutubo doon ang mayabong na mga plants na magbibigay ng buhay sa mga future generations. So, can you, can you think of that? Ayan. So, kung magtanim ka ngayon, Diba? Napaka-powerful ng tree planting, my dear students. So, kung ngayon hindi nyo nare-realize kung anong importance ng tree planting, napaka-powerful niya. Kasi magtanong, magtanim ka ngayon ng trees, okay? So, ilan kayong magtatanim ng trees? Pag yan tumubo after ng ilang years, makikinabang dyan yung future generation. Okay? So, indeed, everything is connected to everything else. Okay? So, fourth, everything changes. My dear students, this is very true. So, lahat ng bagay, tao, lahat ng nasa paligid mo, lahat yan nagbabago. Kahit yung feelings ng mahal mo, di ba? May hugot ng kaunti. So, lahat ng, lahat ng bagay nagbabago. So, the environment is constantly changing. So, sabi nga dito sa atin, um, ang isa sa pinaka-constant na, na bagay sa buong mundo ay yung change. Kasi palagi siyang nagbabago. Ayan. So, Organisms also develop through time. So, di ba tayo, tayo ang, tayo ang pinaka, ano, evidence na lahat ng bagay ay nagbabago. Kasi nag-start tayo sa pagiging baby. O, sino ba ang nag na baby na lang forever? O, di ba ngayon malaki na tayo? So, isa yun sa, sa, ano, sa evidence na everything really changes. Okay? However, with our current technology, we have affected these natural changes. And these changes now causes problematic events to us. Okay, so dahil sa mga makabagong teknolohiya, naapektuhan na natin yung mga changes na yun. Okay, so alam natin na, na, na mag, nagbabago talaga ang mga bagay-bagay, pero dahil sa ating example, oh, the increase of vegetation on earth increase the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere through time. So, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na kapag tayo ay nagtanim, okay, pag tayo ay nagtanim ng mga punong kahoy, pinapataas din natin yung amount of oxygen na matitake in natin. So, di ba, nakikita niyo yung problema sa oxygen sa ibang bansa, di ba, yung sa India, as in lahat na sila merong oxygen tank kasi hirap na hirap na silang huminga because of this ano, global pandemic. So, di ba, so by increasing the vegetation, it will probably increase the amount of oxygen. Okay? At dahil sa mga kagagawan natin, okay, uh, nagsusunog tayo ng basura, nag uh, ano tayo marami ng vehicles, madami na din tayong mga activities na na nakakapag ano nakakapag contribute sa mga ng mga air pollutants sa ating atmosphere. In that way, nadi-disrupt natin yung ano na yon, yung natural process na yon. Kaya oh, meron na tayong ngayong climate change, meron na tayong mga kung ano-ano pa ozone depletion, ang dami. So pag-uusapan natin yan dito sa environmental science. Okay, so another example here uh, na ang lahat ng bagay sa paligid nyo ay nagbabago. Okay, so meron tayong tinatawag na metamorphosis. Okay, metamorphosis of caterpillars to butterflies. O, oh, di ba nagsimula siya sa, ano, sa caterpillar? Ayan, so hanggang siya ay naging butterfly. This illustrates morphological changes that occur in living form. So, Indeed, everything changes. Okay? Even our outlook in life. Okay? So, hinubog tayo ng mga pagsubok sa buhay. And in that way, nagbabago yung ating pananaw sa ating paligid. Sa ating... On how we deal with problems. So, somehow, nagbabago siya. Ano po? So, another. So, for you come now to the fifth, ano, fifth environmental... Uh, environmental principle um, everything must go somewhere so ba diba, nandun ito sa ano nyo sa pre-test nyo so ang ano bang ibig sabihin nito so everything ends up elsewhere it doesn't just disappear so lahat ng tinatapon nyo po nag, mawa, uh, sabi dito mawala man yan sa inyong pagtingin oh, everything that we throw away pieces of paper leftover food Peelings of fruits, plastic wrappers, used containers must have to go somewhere. Mawala man yan sa inyong pagtingin, ayan, 
<laughs> okay, nagtapon ka ng ano, candy wrapper. Okay? So, mawawala siya sa iyong pagtingin, but is the is the it does not cease to exist. It ends up elsewhere. Oh, nagtapon ka ng candy wrapper, inanod siya ng tubig. Oh, magiging part na siya ng bodies of water. And then pag yung candy wrapper na yun nakain ng fish, oh, 'di ba? Nakikita niyo sa Facebook, merong mga fish, mga bird na nasusuffo eh, na namamatay kasi nakakakain sila ng mga plastics. Oh, 'di ba? Baka yung plastic na tinapon mo, yun yung nakain nung nung ano, fish and ano, bird kaya sila ay namatay. Ayun. So, indeed, everything must go somewhere. So, be careful with what you are throwing. Okay? So, yan. Nagtapon ka ng basura sa ilog. Okay? Na lahat ng yan, babalik yan sa'yo once na magbaha. Oh, diba? Napapansin nyo yun? Once na bumaha. Oh, sobrang daming, ano, daming basura sa, sa, ano, sa tubig. Oh, bumabalik yan sa atin. So, akala nyo, <laughs> pag nagtapon kayo, okay? Oh, alimbawa, ikaw magtapon, sabi, sasabihin mo sa sarili mo, ay, isa lang naman ako ma'am what if ilan kayo na magtatapon sa tu sa ilog ng mga basura pag samasamahin yun oh, good luck naman talaga sa mga fish ayan so another example here gases released in the atmosphere may spread okay but it will end up as a component of the atmosphere and can be brought down by rains ayan so yung mga pagsusunog natin okay so mag-spread siya sa ano sa atmosphere Okay, pero babalik yan sa atin. Uh, remember nyo yung water cycle. Okay, so yung water nag evaporate mapupunta siya at sa atmosphere. Babalik yan as rain. Tapos uulit na naman yung cycle. So the more we pollute the air that we are breathing, okay, the more we pollute our environment. Kasi nga, everything must go somewhere. So lahat ng ginagawa mo <laughs> sa iyong paligid, okay, meron niyang kahihinatnan. Okay, meron yang papupuntahan. So, be careful of what you are doing to your environment. Okay? So, malapit na tayo. So, for the sixth environmental ano, principle, we have here, ours is a finite earth. Okay? So, yung atin daw mundo ay may katapusan. Okay? Kasi hindi siya infinite. Okay? So, everything that we need is provided by nature in abundance. So, I hope you will agree with me. Uh, yeah, Mag-agree kayo sa akin na yung ating ano, nature, pre-provide niya yung food, plants, animals, yung water, yung energy na kailangan natin in a form of sunlight. Okay? Light energy, heat energy, the minerals that we have, okay? And the air that we breathe. Okay? Lahat yan pinu-provide ng ating mother nature. Kung hindi nyo man yan nare-realize, well, this is the time for you to realize that Mother Nature provided us all the things that we needed in abundance. Okay, ha? Sobrang dami, siksikliglig. Okay? But, ayan, so, di ba meron tayong mga different energy resources? We have the renewable and non-renewable resources. Okay? So, sabi dito, although... Diba? Yung mga renewable resources can be replenished kasi kaya nga siya tinawag na renewable kahit napapalitan siya. Okay? It is important to understand that these are only renewable. Okay? Naging renewable lang sila if they are not overused and not destroyed from factor factors such as pollution. So, itong mga wind, hydro, hydro, power plant, itong sa solar, sa geothermal, yung biomass. Okay, so itong mga renewable source of energy na ito. Although na-replenish siya, pero hindi natin dapat i-overuse kasi mapapalitan lang sila kapag kapag hindi natin dinestroy. Okay? So pag continuously nating dinestroy yung tubig, okay, yung mga uh, renewable energy resources, wala. Uh, mauubos talaga yung ano mauubos talaga yung lahat lahat na yan ano po so non renewable re resources also experience limits of supply so hindi siya unlimited okay ko so kung feeling mo ay ah, unlimited naman yung water sige na sayangin ko na to nang sayangin hindi po yan unlimited time will come sa discussion natin 
I mean, it comes to water, marirealize nyo kung gaano lang kaliit yung porsyento na nagagamit ng tao for ano for human consumption. So, you really need to ano to to conserve it. You really need to to take care of it and use it efficiently kasi napaka-limited lang ng water na ginagamit ng tao. Ano po? So, example, fossil fuels produce over 1000 of years may be exhausted in a 100 years so di ba yung mga fossil fuels na meron tayo okay uh, nabuo po yan over the 1000 of years di ba sa ilalim ng dagat okay yung mga uh, phytoplanktons ayan so yun yung mga ano mga sources ng ano fossil fuels yung minimi na sa ilalim ng dagat so nabuo yan 1000 of years Okay, pero pwede siyang ma-exhaust in just 100 of years. Okay, imagine niyo, 1000 of years binuo, i-exhaust lang 100 of years. So, indeed, ours is a finite earth. Hindi siya infinite. Okay? May hangganan po ang lahat. Okay? So, and lastly, okay, this is the most sentimental <laughs> environmental principle. So, nature is beautiful and we are the stewards of God's creation. Okay? So tayo yung ano, tayo yung naatasan na pangalagaan ang magandang nilikha ng ating may kapal. So among all creatures, humans are the only ones made in God's image. Okay? So tayo lang yung ginawa ng ginawa ng puong may kapal. Okay? Na ano in his image and have been given the right to have dominion over all his creation. So, binigyan tayo ng karapatan na, na gamitin yung mga bagay na binigay sa atin. Okay? Being the most intelligent and gifted, with reason, we are capable of manipulating creation to our own advantage. So, di ba? Above dun sa mga create ni Papa God, mga animals, mga plants, tayo lang yung capable na mag-isip tayo yung may may talino, okay? Tayo yung may may kakayahan na magano kung ano ang tama at mali. Okay? So, tayo din yung binigyan ng ng ano ng right na magmanipulate noon para sa ating own advantage. That is why okay? Humans cannot exist without nature. Okay? I hope you will agree with me. We are not owners but guardians of the integrity of nature. Hindi tayo ang may-ari ng ating kapaligiran, pero tayo yung tagapagbantay. Okay? So, ayan. So, patuloy nating protektahan yung ating Mother Earth kasi po, protecting the Earth is a life mission. Okay? So, kung ngayon hindi mo pa man yan na, na, uh, ano, na iintindihan, Okay? So, it is a life mission manifested in the things that we do or we say. So, di ba kayo? You are future mechanical engineers. Okay? So, yung pananaw nyo sa buhay, okay, will affect the future of our environment. So, sana, pag kayo ay mga naging engineers na, you really consider the welfare of the environment while considering the welfare of the, ano, the human being. So, I know some of you, uh, may mga uh, may invent okay merong mga mga maiaambag sa ating ano sa ating uh, scientific knowledge so i hope um, you really consider the welfare of our environment okay kasi nga po protecting the earth is a life mission okay so talagang hindi siya basta-basta okay basta-basta lang we take for granted yung environment na meron tayo hindi po pwedeng ganun so, it is manifested in the things that we do and we say. Okay? So, be careful of what you are doing to your environment. Again. So, this is what we've done. Okay? So, gusto kong ipaalala sa inyo na sa kasalukuyan, my dear students, eto na ngayon ang Earth. Okay? Mother Earth is really dying. Okay? Uh, it is crying for, ano, for mercy. Okay? And... Through environmental science, I hope, and I'm very emotional with this, kasi talagang, ano na siya, talagang very degraded na yung earth natin. And um, using the knowledge that I will share to you, all the learnings that uh, that you will, ano, you will learn in this subject, I hope somehow will, ano, really help our mother earth in in solving these problems kasi hindi darating yung time tayo yung kawawa kasi ano lang tayo ay eh, nakikitira lang tayo sa earth so pag buma, pag uh, kapag uh, 
um, ano ba, bumalos or nag, nag-revenge <laughs> yung Mother Earth sa atin, hindi po natin yan kakayanin. So, kung hindi pa kayo naniniwala dyan, uh, I know you are aware for, uh, of what is happening in our world, uh, di ba, sa China, uh, yung pagbaha, ayan, yung mga natrap sa ano, yung natrap sa train, ayan, samot sa uh, kabila ang forest fire, Ayan, sa Canada, yung temperature naging sobrang taas na, sobrang init. Ayan, even dito sa Pilipinas, huwag na tayong lumayo. ba diba? last year, talagang binisit tayo ng talagang bonggang-bonggang mga super typhoon. Ayan, hindi lang isa, dalawa, tatlo. Ayan, so, yun. Yun na yung mga manifestation na talagang Mother Earth ay talagang gumaganti na. Yeah. ganti ng kalikasan malupit na ganti ng kalikasan so I hope ba? Diba? so please help me in educating your family members okay that we really need to protect our environment okay so uh, uh, I'm so excited to share with you other ano, other knowledge about our environment para makatulong tayo to really protect mother nature Okay, so with that, so these are the additional reference materials na pwede nyong tingnan. Ayan, so you can watch the video of Mr. Anderson. Anderson, So, di ba yung sa YouTube video? So, this is also uh, talks about the introduction to environmental science. And also, dito ko, ko kinuha yung ibang diniscuss ko. Doon sa libro na na-upload ko po sa ating Google Classroom. Okay, ito po yung page. Page 1 to 3 and 14 to 21. So, dito po nanggaling yung aking mga diniscuss this afternoon. Okay, so as an important announcement, kasi I'm almost done. Ayan. So, important announcement. As part of this, ano, again, uh, thank you for listening. So, if you have any question, i-reserve nyo po yan sa next asynchronous schedule natin. Okay, so, para ma-make sure ko na pinanood mo yung video na to, I'll be posting a link. Okay, so I'll be posting a link in the description of this video na kung saan uh, doon kayo sasagot. I have a question there. Okay, it is a reflection question about the things that I've discussed in this ano in this video. So, diyan niyo lang makukuha yung link, hindi ko yun ipo-post sa Google Classroom so para makita ko kung talagang pinanood niyo. So, kapag naka-comply kayo doon sa sa sagot na ipo-provide ko doon sa form, it's a form, it's a Google form. So, mas madali kasi ng maano po, mas madali kasi ng mag-gather yung mga answer sa Google form. So, you look for your section ayan, tatlong links ang ilalagay ko dyan for the three sections okay, so you just click it okay, and then you reflect okay, you reflect on the things that I've discussed in this recorded video and then yun, yun, yung, yun yung maging basihan ng sagot nyo doon sa tanong okay, so I hope malinaw po yan sa inyo and I think I don't want to take too much of your time Once again, thank you very much for listening and still ano, watching up until this time. Okay, so thank you very much. I really appreciate you. Okay, so if you have any question, i-reserve mo lang yan sa ating next asynchronous, uh, asynchronous schedule. Okay, also magtatanong din po ako about dito sa diniscuss ko sa video na to sa susunod nating synchronous schedule para malaman ko kung sino talaga yung mga nanood. Okay, so I think that would be all. Okay, can we call it a day? Okay, so thank you very much once again. So see you in our next synchronous schedule. So goodbye and may you have a nice, a nice day. Okay, so thank you. Bye bye.